Death Talk, episode 31. You're listening to a very special episode of the award-winning podcast covering Death Wishing, number one super podcast. Yeah, we're looking at Elite. our two Peabody's right here. Yeah, yeah. The gang's all back, and we're going to be having a special guest join us. The big boss, well, one and a half of the big bosses, Jake, will be uh, joining us to talk about the uh, Converge Blu-ray, the project, everything that went into it, and uh, yeah, we got some questions for him, and hopefully he'll answer them. Uh, okay. But <laughs> but before we get to that, we got to do news, we got to do tours, and I have to introduce the crew. So Mark, hello. Hey. You look very festive today in your red long sleeve. You getting ready for the uh, holiday time? Sure. Yeah. I don't know. I guess red's festive. Caleb's nah, wearing he, the. He's just copping my style. Yeah. yeah, we both wearing red long sleeve garments. Mine's a crew neck though. Mine's a long sleeve. Hashtag Marky long sleeve. Warm and fuzzy. <laughs> Shout out to long sleeves. Shout out to Mark. <laughs> Shout out to long sleeves everywhere. Very good. Very good. Caleb, hello. Hey. Good to uh, good to have you back. It's, it's good to be back, Rich. You excited for this episode? So excited. This is going to be quite the episode. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't rate five stars after this episode, why, yeah, why I mean, even listen? Yeah, yeah. We don't want you listening. Exactly. <laughs> no, we need to keep put, every listener. Go put your t-shirt on and get. get and, and, get. and everyone's uh, favorite miserable podcaster. He's going to yep. <laughs> Not yet, not yet. Chris is here. Yes, I am. I have I actually have new glasses. He's got new glasses. Got new oh, glasses, really? So. Really? Can you see everyone better? Yeah. Yeah. Looking, Unfortunately. Looking very sleek. Do you need glasses for reading or just in general? Just in life. Yeah. You know, okay. Just hey, You're always wearing glasses. Thing. Glasses. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Everyone wears glasses except me here. Glasses Weird. are cool. Oh, but you, you don't have contacts? Bunch of dorks. <laughs> wow. Damn. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, everyone's here. Uh, Mark. 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 I'm trying to turn this thing off so everyone doesn't know where I am at all times. <laughs> Mark's paranoid. I can't figure it out. Ma- Mark's paranoid about the uh, Find My Friends app on his iPhone. He thinks yeah. everyone's tracking him. Okay, you're either at work, home, or in Salem. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Okay. I already know where you are without the app. Oh, God. <laughs> I wish you'd forget. <laughs> uh, Mark, why don't you tell us about the uh, news? we got some lots of news to talk about. Lots of news to talk about. So... First, let's uh, send out a congratulatory comment to Cult Leader for being on the uh, top 40 albums of 2015 Woo! for Decibel Magazine. Great job, Cult Leader. Yeah. Keep on suffering. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Keep, I like how you like faded away. Keep on suffering. Because I realized well, I probably shouldn't have said that. Whatever. <laughs> That's good. Well deserved. Well deserved. Lightless Walk. If you haven't checked it out, you should give it a listen it's very good uh so yeah it was at number 36 the top 40 albums uh a lot of other awesome albums you should look out the ho- check out the whole list um we'll put a link in the show notes yeah so there's that horrendous at number one yeah it's a good record one so it's it's horrendous <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> okay um so next is uh we can talk about black friday stuff which is this friday oh shit oh shit you're right Black Friday is uh, it's going to start at midnight. Hold on, on. This, do we do we have a breaking news sound effect? Because this is breaking news, Marcus. Bow, 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 bow. Yeah, you should use that air horn. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, any sound effect would do. But you stopped using sound effects a while ago. Yeah, well, why? I thought we all agreed that that was great. Why did you stop? Mark hated it. He did. That's yeah. why it was great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I, I thought it was good sometimes, but now I kind of miss him. Um. Okay, so Black Friday. This Friday is uh, November 27th, starting at midnight. You can use the code BLACKFRIDAY2015, all one word, and uh, at the checkout on our store, and you'll get 21% off your entire order all weekend long. Your entire order? Everything. Not even not a part of the order? No, and not even just a good amount of your order. <laughs> the entire order is going to be twenty one percent off. Wow! Wow! Did you good think- for you? Did you steal that from film school? <laughs> nope. <laughs> you might think, oh, you'll probably just give twenty percent off. No, we're generous enough to give twenty one percent off. Yeah, Caleb said, throw that one percent in there. Yeah. Fuck it. 
Yeah, yeah actually, that 1% is coming out of Caleb's paycheck. <laughs> yeah, so, so use it up. Use it wisely. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Get a long sleeve. Get a long sleeve or a... Uh, uh, a pin? I was trying to think of something you like that's in the store, but you don't like music. Oh, so. y- oh you're implying I don't like anything. Get a Death yes. Waltz release. Do we have we some go. of those still? I think we have Ooh. one House yeah, of the Devil one. soundtrack left. That's it. Caleb loves soundtracks. Mammoth Grinder. I do. That's out of stock at the moment. Shit. Okay, anyways. Move so, on. So, <laughs> 21% off your entire order. I appreciate the effort. Yeah. 21% off your entire order at store.deathwishinc.com. So, uh, yeah, do that shit. And we're going to have plenty of discounted bundles. Wait, uh, What? Yes. Wait. Bundle. 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 <laughs> Let's harmonize. Bundle. 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 <laughs> should we? <laughs> Daco. <laughs> Yo, should we all quit our jobs to be a barbershop quartet? Yes, yeah. we can. <laughs> There's no way for <clears throat> Chris to join that. I'm not doing that. Why? <laughs> We should have a quick poll. This is America. How? The land of the free, the home of the brave. We're in Death Wish. We should have a quick poll. All the listeners, how sexy is Chris's <laughs> mysterious miserableness? <laughs> Very. Like, it's a turn on. Sexy. <laughs> <laughs> um, wow. He's blushing. It's Thank getting you. hot in here. <laughs> so hot. So take. Okay. Um, <laughs> I was going to. All right, Paraphrase derailed Nelly. already. Where, right. where are we at? So, yeah, 21% off your entire order. Next thing we can talk about is the discounted bundles, bundles, bundles. We're going to stop at that. Yes. There are lots of bundles. There are... Rich, you want to go into a little more detail with this? Yeah. Uh, we won't give out all the details. We're going to be... Because it's a lot. But uh, we'll be having some Death Wish bundles, which will include um, all the releases that we put out this year. And they'll Every be different. last one. There'll be different configurations there, so there'll be like a CD one, there'll be like an LP one, and you can get tape. all of yep tape one get tape fiends, and they're gonna be limited quantities of these, but they're gonna be huge discounts, huge like bigger than twenty one percent. It's gonna be huge. <laughs> <laughs> huge. Shout out to Trump. That's a it's, oh, I <laughs> shout out. It's gonna be huge. Shout out to Donna Conley too, because she likes to say huge. She does say huge. Huge. <laughs> yeah. I like people who don't pronounce the H. Yeah, she never does. So yeah, there's gonna be. Um, I think is there five, Caleb? Five different bumbles. Yes, Bum- bumbles. 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 Bumblebees. Bumblebees. All right, cool. Yeah, discounted so, bumble- bumblebees. They're going up at midnight, so <laughs> make sure you get on the store. Wait Get on there. the store at eleven fifty. Don't don't refresh Hold on. too much. Maybe I'll feel frisky. Maybe I'll put that shit up eleven fifty nine. Yeah, Caleb's gonna be uh, fresh off. I just can't wait. Thanksgiving dinner. I got a good idea. Everyone's gonna be waiting in line on Black Friday in retail stores. Either get on the Death Wish store on your phone, or get into the nearest Apple store. Get on the computer, the display computers. <laughs> buy it from that computer, and then everyone around you be like, "Yo, dog, do you know you can get all these tapes at a discounted rate?" And they'd be like, "Wow." I never knew that I can get so much great music at such a discounted price this late at night on the internet. And you can just spread the word for everyone. Is there a cash register sound we could make right now? <laughs> Maybe a cash register sound, but not a cash register sound. <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's a register? Yeah, so be there. Be there at midnight after... Uh, be after, there. Don't be fall sp- asleep. Yeah, don't. Don't eat too much and fall asleep. Yeah. And make sure once you buy all the Apple TVs, you'll have enough money for music after. Yeah, Mark knows. Be there or be square. Just learned about what the meaning of that is. Math jokes. Do you know that? Mm, I actually don't know. Because <laughs> if, if you're be there, be, be there or be square. So if you're square, you're not around. Oh. Get it? <laughs> all right. So next thing we can talk about Black Friday is we're going to have a, a new pressing of Code Orange... Code Orange is last album, I Am King. But that's been out of press. Yes, it has. <laughs> but there's a new version of it on 180 gram black vinyl, limited to only a thousand copies that you can only get on our store and from the band on tour with their upcoming tour with Terror, which Chris will talk about soon. And then we're also going to, oh yeah, that's it. And yeah. yeah, yeah. Keeping the faith. Keep the motherfucking faith. And then, real quick, we're going to talk about Converge a lot more when Jake comes in, but um, I'll just mention that 
thousands of miles between us, the three disc Blu ray will be extravaganza. In, extravaganza will be in stores this Friday on Black Friday. So, so make sure you, you know, get out, go listen to it. It's also digitally going to be available on Friday, so you yeah. can buy that. Watch it on your new Apple TV. Let, let's say you can do that. Let's buy say it at Best Buy. Let's say you're in a Best Buy and you 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 catch just a gold sparkle in the in the in the bottom <laughs> right of your in your of your eye and your peripherals. Walk towards that gold sparkle and you'll be pleasantly surprised. Because it's gonna be Tombu, Tombu, Tombu. Yep. Bundle it. Tombu. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <you> sing that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just like Yahoo. yeah, right. yeah. Sorry. Just Join in, it. Just we're, in time for We're just tour about time. to do tour time. Ah, yeah, so that's, time. that's it for all the, all the new stuff. Jake just joined us. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. How, how's that seat? Is it comfortable? Yes, this is comfortable. Hi, guys. Hey. What's up? Hey. hey. How, how is my level? Are you okay? You, yeah. Your mic, your mic was pretty low earlier. Yeah, you might want to get you might want to so. get right in that thing. Oh, get yeah, right yeah. in that. Yeah, thing. Yeah, there you go. That sounds good. <laughs> All right. You, it makes you sound like a, you're on the radio or something. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Uh. Friday, November twenty seventh. That Converge Blu-ray comes out. Go get it this Friday. Yeah. Yes. Um. Friday. It's gonna be at every Best Buy. So. Yep. Every single one. And a ton of other stores, yeah, but we know... your favorite yeah. local... That too, yeah. ...music retailer. Hopefully in your hands. <laughs> <laughs> also, if there's a record store that you go to and it's not there, tell them to get it, because it's very available, so we yeah, can... Yeah, contact Mark at deathwishing.com. Yeah, exactly. So, if you, if you don't see it and you want to get it, tell them and they can get some. Very cool. Thank you, Mark. Thanks for the news. You're very welcome. Chris, it's that time. It's that time. Time to get miserable. Let's get it. Cool. Let's do it. It's tour time and miserable, Chris. Let's go. <sighs> get right into it. <laughs> Bring it in. All right. Uh, Birds in Row just announced a bunch more European shows starting December 5th through the 17th. So check out those dates. They're going to be awesome. Uh, got some recap. Uh, Code Orange, Terror, Take Offense, King Nine, Malfunction Tour starts uh, this Saturday in Chicago. It's going to be awesome. Uh, Harm's Way, Twitching Tongues tours uh, going on now. Uh, we're going to see them on Friday. Yep. Ooh, so. baby. The Middle East. Yeah. Come hang out. Now, Twitching Tongues with uh, F. Sean Martin now playing guitar. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah, that's a that's a very big, cool, awesome thing. Yeah. F. Fun. Sean Martin of, of Hatebreed, and uh, he's also played guitar with Cage, and uh, was it? I, I'll slaughter this name. Kid Kudai? Is that how you say that? Oh, Kid Cuddy? Cuddy? Shut up, Kid, really? Cuddy? Kid Cuddy. <laughs> I don't fucking know how to say that shit. <laughs> wow. Chris, I'm, I'm more surprised that he played with him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, did, he did a tour. Oh, um, really? Yeah. And uh, he's done a, a wide variety of things. He's also uh, a good friend and a, a good tattooist at Brass City Tattoo in Waterbury, Connecticut. And Exoskeletons. He did Exoskeletons with Wes as well. That was awesome. Underrated record, by the way. He was in the hate breed through Rise of Brutality, I believe, and then he decided that he no longer wanted to tour and uh, took a break for a while. So, very cool. Yeah, very cool. Chris, he uh, wants to also tour. one last to Chris. tour uh, going on. Cold World tour starts uh, tomorrow. Well, today. Today. Uh, today. Yeah. today. Starts now. Yeah. So, uh, and they're playing a, a show in Pennsylvania and, and Title Fight, uh, War Hungry, uh, I think a few other bands. All uh, of w- West, West Point, Point is yeah. playing. So that show is going to be awesome. So definitely go to that. They just announced that. So I'll be seeing them in an Irish pub on Sunday. Yeah, that'll be awesome. <laughs> yeah. It's got Mark's favorite flyer <laughs> of the year. <laughs> oh, yeah, the Coca Cola flyer. Oh, yeah, that one's really cool. That's actually that's the one from Arizona. My bad. But still, that's a really cool flyer. Oh, there you go. So, that's it? Yeah, that wraps it up. Uh, What if someone wants more information, Chris? Where should they go? Then go to uh, deathwishink.com slash tours. There we go. We're always updating it. Bookmark it and visit it every day. And that's on the internet. (laughs) That wasn't... (laughs) That wasn't. We do that again because I wasn't miserable enough today, Chris. Yeah, you sounded kind of happy yeah, when you were reading. I'm drinking a. Uh, that's the taurine. Yeah, it's <laughs> a Red Bull. Yeah. Uh, uh, Red Bull. Mm. Keeping you up. Very cool. Trick, huh? This episode brought to you by Red Bull. Shout out to Red Bull. <laughs> gives you wings. Yeah. Gives. Right. Is that the one that gives you wings? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. Uh, okay. Cool. Um, tour time is over, and now it's time for the uh, the big segment. Um, mm. Oh shit. Uh, 
our our half of our, half half of our bosses is here. The other one's in the other room. I just saw him. Oh, he is. Yeah, he's he here. showed up. Oh, maybe maybe we should get him. him in here too. No, well, there's no way. <laughs> uh, we're gonna talk about the um, upcoming Converge Blu-ray uh, coming out this Friday. So before we start, let's uh, let's break down each one and what and how and what each. Uh, configuration of the blu-ray is and what what people can get so <laughs> start off the segment so miserably. we have we have another two hours right to do this <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 i i'm i, I feel i'm I want, I want to be as miserable as chris i'm a fan yeah. <laughs> do you want me to talk about it Cause I, <laughs> I think it sucks <laughs> no. it's really long it's true yeah so there's okay, okay. There, let's start at the beginning there's uh all the 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 first configuration of it. Um, there's a digital version. It's only five dollars. Correct. You can go to thousands of miles between us dot com. You can purchase that uh, for five dollars, and you can watch it anywhere. Mark, you can watch it on your Apple TV. Get out of here! No yeah, way. yeah. yeah your, old, your old shitty Apple TV. Yeah, fucking you know. 1080p. <laughs> Actually, I think the new one's <laughs> they're all 1080p. There isn't, there, I don't think there is a step oh, wait, up in resolution. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, the 4K, 4K now. eventually. Oh, yeah. Sooner yeah. there'll be an Apple yeah. TV where the actors just like live at your house and just perform <laughs> it in front of you. Yeah, the, the 4K thing is is that standard is going to take a while to, uh, to grab. Oh, definitely. Yet. So you can get that, and you can watch anywhere like an iPad, Apple TV, anywhere. The, the app's really good. Uh, for it's on VHX, and they're really good. I like they them. are. They do a lot of cool stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's going to be available the same day. Um, and the Blu-ray, the physical Blu-ray, will three be... Blu-rays. It's a three-disc set. So now the digital version only has the feature set, the Philadelphia Live set from the first disc. That is correct. But if you get the Blu-ray, you get all 18-plus hours of stuff. You get an entire day. <laughs> <laughs> um uh, just about. Yeah, do you want to list everything that's on? No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. There's a lot you of get stuff. Hate for, Yo, uh, give, you get give, me, give me one. I'll, re- I'll read the back. <laughs> is, is, there, is there one in here? Uh, no. I Shit. Think, I think we shipped out all the ones we have. <laughs> we have more coming today. I, I um, actually think, yeah, I don't think I even have have one in the damn, other room. They're, they're going like hotcakes, so. They are. Um, so, yeah, there's... Do you know how many sets there are? There's a lot. There's a lot of sets. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot. I, I Interviews. Count, to be honest. Um, some weird... Horse stuff. I think there actually is one upstairs. You want me to grab it? <laughs> no. That's okay. It's, no, okay. it's, a, it's all right. All right. So th- there's a lot of stuff. Uh, yeah. This two and three, I consider a sequel of sorts to our previous DVD release that we put out in what was that 2003? Yeah, yeah. And uh, this this two and three kind of t- they they take up where the previous release left off. And it's basically ten years of our band playing uh, all over the world live for a while. Wow, um, it, it's chronologically right. It is chrono. Yeah, it's it's chronological, which actually is a is a kind of a cool visual thing because you get some crude VHS stuff in there with some like you know really sort of like hot wild you know RGB lights going on and stuff, mm-hmm. and uh, you know things sound wild and as as the the project kind of progresses the quality uh drastically improves and you see you know you you really yeah you actually see all the the switch over to everybody shooting in hd yeah you know in the um in the, the mid 2000s which is pretty cool very cool and the um we'll get more into that stuff too as well but the uh the last configuration is the uh deluxe box set yeah. um that's got the blu-ray in it it's got the double LP live um, set from Philadelphia. It's got a huge photo book, 160 pages. Uh, it's got a slip mat. It's got an embroidered patch. Did I miss something? And it comes in this phenomenal box. All housed in this really... Uh, the box alone is worth it. <laughs> the, bar, the, the box alone is a very expensive part of the yeah. project. But yeah. yeah, I mean, uh, that, that's a, it's a beast. Yeah. So, Seven pounds? Something like that? Yeah. yeah. Six pounds, seven pounds? Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. It, it rounds up to seven. It's six. Yeah. It's it's over six something. So it's obviously a must-have for any Converge fan. So And actually, you must you, you should already have it because it's gone. 
I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I forgot to say. Yeah, you can't buy that anymore. It was gone. Well, eBay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. sure some will show be Yeah, Caleb, uh, how, huh? how come what? you listed like six of them on eBay on your account? I don't know what happened. <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. So, let's talk about that. Um, I remember... I remember you starting this a while ago. That's true. Uh, I remember, I remember you walking by your office years ago. Now, <laughs> yep. You, did you start it in, in the old office? I started it here. Okay, I it, started in two thousand seven, I believe. Okay, uh, right after release to uh, right after the release of No Heroes. And I remember we were going to put it out a while ago, but then you said. Got to add more. I wanted to add more. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, honestly, I felt that DVDs were sort of uh, falling by the wayside as a media. I mean, all, all physical media is always waning and changing and evolving. And uh, it's funny, even when we started this thing, there was, there was a battle between uh, HD DVDs and oh, Blu-ray. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it was that. like, yeah, but maybe I should maybe I should do some one of these medias. And then I was like, oh, well, one of them is going to be the Betamax and yeah. one's going to be Red the Blue. Yeah. Yeah, so just kind of waited that out for a while, and then Blu-ray uh, won, and they use a they, they use their own uh, you know encoding system and stuff, and it's a it, it was a challenge to to create that. We actually learned a lot when we did the American Nightmare one. Yeah, I was gonna say yeah. that one took took a little bit too because that was supposed to be a DVD too. Yes, that wasn't gonna be a Blu-ray, but right. then. Yeah, the, it just made sense because the quality was there. Why not, right? Well, you know, one thing that people don't understand is the file size of an HD video is really big. Yeah. Uh, so uh, most DVDs, you know, you're getting like a what at, at max a 720 pixel image, 640. I think it. I think it's actually four. I think it's 480. Yeah, 480 yeah. by six, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's low, and a, a lot of machines, a, a lot of even you know inexpensive Blu-ray players, and like uh, probably PlayStation does this too. They up res things uh, yeah. on their own, yep. but it's never quite as good as like a real true HD kind of thing. So, uh, yeah, we just wanted to make something big and, and wild, you know, and uh, I, I got this great footage to start it that kind of spawned the project, which is us playing in uh, Japan in 2002. And then our friend Kazu shot in the same club in 2012 and gave us the same set in HD. And so you see it 10 years later. And I was just like, oh, I gotta include this. This is, you know, in 2010, I was like, I thought I was done at that point. I was like, no, I'm not done. <laughs> I gotta keep going. So, like, once the word got out, like, in, you know, your circle of friends and coworkers and everything, did you start getting more footage from people? Like, kind of coming out of the woodwork and be like, oh, I got this. Can, you, sure. can you add this in? Yeah, a, a lot of people that have been super cool to us donating stuff over the years, you know, we've had a lot of the same. Uh, video friends, you know, you go to you, you go to some city or whatever, and they're the guys that are documenting or gals documenting a, a show, and it's usually the same people. Uh, so yeah, so a bunch of them donated footage. All of the labels, Epitaph and EVR, were super cool in uh, giving us all our music videos, which are oh yeah, those are all included in there yeah, too. They're and they're in they're, the timeline, the sequential order. They're in right? the timeline, and that was a difficult thing to figure out because for a while, you know, we were like, should we just stick them at the end uh but we wanted to make a chronological piece so they kind of act as a nice little uh, breaks in you know a, a live barrage of of music and noise and then you have this sort of like theatrical break there's there's some uh there's some other cool stuff in there the hate verge set you mentioned yes uh that did uh, some of that snuck up on youtube a few years ago i believe ben, either ben or kurt actually uploaded that and abandoned a youtube account uh with it <laughs> But it was just like a couple songs they they had of it, and the Whiskey A Go Go were cool enough to uh, donate the the whole set to us because they shot it with a couple like automatic camera angles that they have there, and that was uh, Converge playing. I think we were on tour with doing some West Coast shows with First Blood and I want to say Some Girls at the time. Oh wow! Uh, that's I believe that's what the shows were. So what, does this kind of start in two thousand seven? Two thousand uh, no, the the this stuff starts in two thousand two. Oh, okay, okay. 2002 to 2000... Uh, oh, yeah, because of the, the Japanese tour. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, the, uh, so I was going to say, it does kind of pick up where the, the long road home kind of left off. Yes. Yeah, so it just keeps adding. So are, are you going. currently working on the next one? <laughs> yeah, did the next one start <laughs> yet? It's actually funny. There's uh, there's probably about 30 sets that I didn't include. Some... Uh, I want, I was, yeah, I was also going to ask, like, 
for stuff you turned away? Like, is how much stuff did you turn away just like quality wise or like just too much? Some of it was too much. Some of it was, you know, redundancy, you know, cause obviously you're going to have a lot of the, the same songs, but I wanted to, you know, chronologically be able to, um, be able to, to showcase each sort of era. <clears throat> Sorry, my voice is crazy today. Uh, each era of the band or, you know, each album touring time or whatever. And so, there, you know, our first time to Australia wasn't the greatest footage, but I wanted to include it because, you know, to us that's an important thing. Uh, but yeah, the project went on so long that it sort of became a mythological thing. A lot of releases that take a long time become that. You know, it's just just the way it is. I'm glad that we did take the time because it came out great. Yeah, I mean, you know, there really there's not like a uh, there's no like time crunch really. No. It's really just you know, especially when you're doing something for your own label and you kind of have that like little like i can do this and put out the best product you know what i mean and not sure. kind of be like i gotta get hit this deadline to get this all done and just push it out the door so um you know sometimes with other labels you have a deadline and you just have to get it out there before the, de- <laughs> before true, the deadline true passion project. yeah i mean yeah that, that was one of the cool things about starting death wish way back when was we could do converge related things or like converge related projects and stuff and do them at our own pace and uh, just do what we want when we want. And so uh, this project took a backseat a bunch of times because, I mean, you guys know how much multitasking goes on around here. And for listeners, they may not know that. But on any given day, uh, we are writing uh, – I'm personally writing copy, uh, promoting releases, uh, promoting tours, designing records, designing ads, designing apparel – Mm. Yeah, and I would work on this in between all of those things when I got a chance. I mean, at any given time, I have two machines, you know, rolling, and I'm making art in the other room usually. So there's a there's always a bunch of stuff happening. Yeah, a lot of the days it's just kind of pick your poison. What do you want? What do you want to accomplish today? And, yeah, uh, it can be dizzying. Yeah. Kind of, you know, where you where you don't know uh, exactly even where to start sometimes. And so this project was like one of those things that kind of fell into that. Uh, I'll work on it when I can for a while, and then the last I would say the last six months was like all right let's let's really ramp it up and 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 wrap this thing up yeah yeah and you had you had some you had some basic video editing skills, but like yeah. you they, they've really grown i'm I'm assuming over the past few years <laughs> they, they've grown you know a, a, there was an immense amount of help from people um dwid was actually one of my first people that helped me a lot with uh with oh, yeah. using final cut and the early versions of final cut he taught me a lot of stuff uh he was working with he was working on this project with me when we toured with coliseum and integrity and that was in 2000 well like eight or nine. Oh wow really yeah so he was showing me stuff then so it's been a long time yeah yeah you know and then uh ian mcfarland uh, from mcfarland and petchy he, he he taught me a lot of stuff yeah and yeah you're just gonna learn as you go just you know just like any other technical skill mm-hmm. mm. yeah so um what was kind of the most well let, first let me ask you why the philadelphia set why was that why the did philadelphia you, set? like why <laughs> was that set did you guys know when you guys were doing that set did you guys know that it would end up on the blu-ray or did you guys pick no. it no you didn't okay no we did we, we just like to document stuff and yeah. you know, a lot of people show up to document stuff we were in uh texas i believe at fun 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 festival um the first time we played it which is actually in the book the jimmy hubbard's photos yeah that are in the book and Kurt mentioned to Jimmy that we might record the set there and possibly mix it for surround and, and, and try that out because we've never done it before or at the very least do you know like a good board stereo mix of it. Yeah, we forgot to mention that too. The first disc is in surround sound. It is in surround yeah. sound. Uh, it's surra- it, it's it, yeah, it, it auto y- – you can you can select your auto input. My, my, I have to change mine manually yeah. my, on my uh, – my system at well, home when we were in the theater the other night i could you could hear the separation like we so we we, we all went to the converge screening um at the coolest corner but you could hear the separation of like the crowd yeah they, as opposed to the band you know what i mean it was yeah, kind of cool i think they didn't they didn't have 5.1 no. they had what 4.1 or something like <laughs> yeah that. yeah yeah but you could definitely hear the separation yeah it was cool you know yeah. it just it just gives it some depth you know um i would say 90 percent of the people will probably just check out the stereo and just listen to the stereo but it's it's it was a cool exercise it was yeah something cool to do yeah and uh, yeah, Kurt mixed it, and uh, Alan mastered it in uh, in surround. But yeah, so we asked Jimmy at Fun 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 Fest if he wanted to uh, shoot it, and so he showed up with a, a bunch of friends and uh, 
and volunteers and they shot it with a few cameras and and donated it to us and that's pretty much it awesome yeah very cool very cool um so yeah we talked about that we talk- what was the kind of the what was kind of the most difficult part of the whole thing? Was it just the uh, uh, the assembly of all the stuff? Was it the actually the authoring? Like what? What? Uh, what was what? What, what really kind of said like, man, I, this is going to take a long time to get together and 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 I, uh, I don't know. Honestly, every aspect of it was frustrating. Yeah, <laughs> you know, because it's. You, you you run into things you, you can't even imagine. You run into things. I mean, we were working. We were at the 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 home stretch of this thing, and uh, oh yeah, the, the guys uh, Tony and Ian at me, uh, McFarlane and Petchy were like uh, running into various technical hiccups that kept happening, and it was nothing uh, that was in my control or their control. It was just fluke things with certain files and certain certain things in there that were you know making things go a little crazy yeah i remember we we scheduled the street date we announced it and yes. then they were like oh we can't get the third disc to burn or like yeah. like it, they couldn't it, like it was like there was just some random thing that it like wouldn't work the for third, some reason yeah, i'm not a video editor so i don't know exactly what it was but yeah i mean it's it's some technical stuff but essentially a lot of the places that do blu-ray authoring now especially the high-end stuff they've built yeah. their own software to do those things but some of the adobe products that existed for a while and no longer supported it's by adobe so yeah so some stuff is just kind of abandoned and it still works but only kind of works and, <laughs> and for some reason didn't like a disc that was you know whatever and six or seven keep this hours. in mind that if something was wrong with one of the discs it would take hours to 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 render it to like to make a new version of it, it. would take a half a day a half yeah a, f- a physical half a day oh so my God. so yeah. like if we found something or jake found something or whatever and he'd be like oh i gotta i gotta fix this thing he'd like literally just let it run you'd have <laughs> yeah you'd have to just let it yeah let it run and re-encode and rewrite. Yeah. and then there's a whole process once yeah once it's goes to to authoring which yeah. also takes equally as long so it's and it's not like we could send the files like over dropbox you know what i mean like no jake had to drive to boston with a drive yeah or I, overnight a drive or <laughs> yeah i think i spent more time in alston than i have since 1999 <laughs> when, I, when i lived there you know like, yeah. i lived i lived there for a, a number of years and i was I haven't been back in a while. Yeah. You know, I, I'm, I'm sure you missed it a lot, though. Right? You know, it's <laughs> it's really not much different. Although they the, the the they cleaned it up a bit. The median is, is Tintin nice Buffet pretty. still there? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, cool. Which one's that? The one across Rip. from the band? Uh, yeah, the practice space. Well, one of oh, the sound okay. museum. That's where you just fill up your Chinese food and just like yeah. they weigh it. Is the <laughs> is that is that you, the, you only make that mistake once? <laughs> I, I had a I had a practice space down there that was like across from an old Dunkin' Donuts. Is that the sign? Yep. Is that that's probably that's probably it. It's across from yeah, Dunkin' think, Donuts. Yeah, it's been yeah, the Dunkin' Donuts is a little little newer though. They, okay, they've done some renovations, but Tintin's still there. Okay, practice spaces are still you know still great. Yeah, it's it's crazy. I mean, some of it has changed dramatically down there, but it's mm-hmm. it, it's pretty wild. You know, it, it's it's wild to to go down to James's restaurant, our two restaurants now, who yeah. used to work at Death Wish for for a while. Um, he has has Roxy's and his oh new yeah, vegan spot. what's the new one called? I forget. Whole Heart Provisions. Whole there Heart we Provisions. go. Yeah, just yeah. opened, right? Yeah. Shout out. Shout out. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so uh, I spent a lot of time there with them. They they did a a great job putting it together. The McFarlane and Pesci guys and. Uh, yeah, it was um, it was just a just a big project. Anything that's that big, t- not not big as far as like sales or anything like that. Just like big in 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 scope, you know. Yeah, it's like it's like, yeah. it's like assembling like a giant album. I think know? the box set was kind of like a not I don't want to say a last minute thing, but like you finished the Blu Ray and then we're just yeah. like, well, how are we going to sell this? Like, what do you know? What do you want to do? And right, we're like, let's do the box set, and then that was another thing that got added on to that. You know what I mean? Well, it's tough because you 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 go okay, how how are we going to package this and present it to people? Um, I personally hate regular DVD packaging and Blu-ray packaging, yeah. although there are standards that are out there. Uh, I always, if I have anything that's music related, I file it with music stuff. I don't, I don't file it with movies. I don't have like a little movie section of like six yeah. or seven things. And and so like you I, don't put it with your Happy Gilmore Blu-rays. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I think no, I have. Keeps happy. Them with Gilmore. <laughs> and it keeps them with Billy Madison. <laughs> yeah, that's a good movie. You know, it's funny. I, I yeah, <laughs> I, I have a couple of drawers full of like DVDs and stuff, and 
and uh, Charlie, my one year old, goes and just whips him out. Yeah, <laughs> he he whips out. Uh, he likes taking out Halloween three. Oh hell yeah, season yeah. of the witch. Yeah, and he just whips it out. It's all over the all over the place. He took out um, Brotherhood of the Wolf the other day, scratched it all up real well. It was, it was cool. Dude, he's got to <laughs> preserve him so we can watch him later. I, I know. You know, I tried to play uh, play him the Iron Giant. Oh hell yeah! Yesterday, so good, or two days ago, and. Uh, he was really into Hogarth, and awesome. uh, he was he was feeling it, but he scratched it up so bad that all of a sudden it just it, you know it just stopped and just I you know, got the the logo of I got the big big Samsung who showed up and I was like <laughs> shit. Um, uh, that movie's so good. It really is good, and you know the the blue there's a Blu-ray version that came out at one point, but it's I don't think it's available anymore. I'll, I'll talk. We got I want to stay stick around for do you do movie time? Do a movie. We're gonna not we're, we didn't do one for this episode because. Okay. Because we're announcing a good one this week. Yeah, we're gonna. We're, he's gonna give me my next one for yeah. uh, for the next episode. And we're, we're doing another little special thing. So we'll, yeah, okay. Yeah. Got some stuff planned. I have lots of suggestions for you guys. <laughs> um, add them to the list. Yeah, add them to the list. We'll just make rich. Just I, sit. I usually I usually consult Trey and Jake yeah. before movie before film yeah. school. Well, you, you gave me some fucking duds lately. No, you just don't know how to appreciate. <laughs> Unforgiven's a boring movie. I want You're to... boring. <laughs> <laughs> Rich, I want you to watch some like really dark movies. Like something that will like I'll like call it sick on Monday. Like I just like can't come in. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, some some good I'm Japanese my stuff or some yeah. Some... Oh, we should make him watch House. <laughs> what H- House? Houseu. <laughs> oh Houseu. Oh yeah, make him watch. I have no idea. Mermaid in a manhole. About. <laughs> have you ever seen that? I haven't seen that one. No, oh, but you, I you would call anything with sick. a mermaid. You, you know, it's gonna be good. <laughs> You'd call Gozu. it sick. Oh, yeah, that would be good. Um, but anyway, so best birthing yeah. scenes. Sorry, we're getting <laughs> <laughs> yeah. sorry. We were talking about your uh, we were yeah. talking about your Adam Sandler uh, Blu-ray collection. Yeah, I have a few. I have a few. I went through. You know, I I went through a uh, a phase of of buying movies. So yeah, so I've I've got a bunch. I'm, I'm still trying to get out of that phase. It's a good. It's a good face to be in. Yeah, you know, I like. I, I like owning stuff. You know, I, I like owning movies. I, I'm a movie guy. I like movies. I mean, anyone that's been here, there's a lot of movie posters around. Well, now they're in a pile. But yeah, we just steal them all and put yeah. them all over the office. Yeah, that's yeah, all right. I usually see one that's too good and I have to hang it up somewhere. So <laughs> no, there. Yeah, there's there's some good ones around. I used to have. I used to collect a lot of movie posters. That was my thing. There was a yeah. place in Cambridge called uh, Pick's Poster Cellar. And they, I think they're online now, I, mm-hmm. but you used to be able to go there and go through these big binders that they would have like little minis of each thing in these three awesome. ring binders. And they had like, you know, six or seven of them. Got all the weird like international versions. That's stuff. all it was. So cool. And they were, and at the time they were, they were mainly a mail order place pre-internet. Mm-hmm. Um, but you would go there and you can buy like, you know, eight by tens and shit, but you would, um, you go through it and you would find like, you know, weird Italian subway poster and you'd be like, yeah, I want you know this this leon poster i want this you know like lost highway french poster and you know subway size and they're like 20 bucks and they were like the coolest thing yeah. ever oh that's so awesome and so many of them um but anyway yeah, yeah this we this converge yeah thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah so it's a it's a cool release i'm really happy it, it came together it was hard to do it's, yeah it's it's really long it's not for uh, the casual listener it's for somebody who appreciates our band already i think yeah and yeah. uh you know but I, it's a it's a quality release and i want it to to be a substantial thing not feel like an afterthought or like you know like a secondary thing i want to make it feel like it's as important as we feel it is you guys have uh never you, you've done some live stuff on albums before but never never done a live album here and there um, yeah this will be the first lp that you've done that's a live album yeah i mean you know it has all its like wild flaws and yeah that's a, that's the tough thing about punk rock and hardcore and stuff or you know, a band like it's ourselves. tough to capture live it's tough to I capture think, or on, on, on audio sorry the vocals yeah. are dropping out i'm running around i can only get out every other syllable half the time because i'm running <laughs> yeah. and you know and, and, and a random guy will pick up the mic and go yes! yeah exactly <laughs> and, and, and it's like and it's, to me it's super fun and it, and it yeah. sounds wild but it's you know most people will hear and just go like what the what's fuck what's the this? time limit for someone that picks up the mic and, and, and oh. say like like i mean a few words here and there but the worst is when you know they someone grab it and keep it. Yeah, they're like they're like doing like a whole like uh, section of the song. This is a great segue. <laughs> there's a, there, there's a guy. There's a there, there's there's like a, I didn't I didn't pay to see you sing yeah. the song tonight. That being said, the hate merch set doesn't yes. count. That doesn't count. That doesn't that doesn't count. But that's the set I'm going to talk about. Okay, good, good. There's a guy 
in that set that when Jamie's singing, I'm pretty sure he thinks it's his audition. <laughs> <laughs> Where like he goes up there and he's like, I'm fucking on. This is it. <laughs> I've made it. Everyone's going to see me and I'm going to they're going to kick out their vocalist and fight over me. And he he basically like just sings for, you know, yeah. a, a very long time. And it's 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 awesome to see because obviously he's so excited about the band or whatever, but it's um you know, it's still it, it's still funny. At least know the words too when you do yeah. this. Oh stuff. yeah, he knows everything. <laughs> yeah, he, he knows the words. He, he knows practicing. everything. Some people, he knows. He was, some people yeah. don't. He was practicing in the car on the way over. Speaking of which, yeah. what? Lots of awesome stage dives. Lots of lots of goofy. Yeah, stage there was dives. some good stuff. <laughs> yeah, that guy some... in that one sweatshirt was like the star of the show. Oh, yeah. red yeah. sweatshirt. I love the yeah. guys who who stand up and like have uh-huh. to like everybody like hey. I'm gonna jump now. <laughs> Get ready. Yeah, I love yeah. that. You know, it, it's it's funny. We've we've all been there. We've all been you know like younger, going to shows before you sort of like come up with some sort of like some sort of control of your of your enthusiasm. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, like, I did it. You know, I did it between I would say between the ages of like 13 and I, 17. I think Hate yeah. Verge is your last. Uh, recorded stage dive. Correct? Yeah, you know, I, I, you, I think you, yeah, you came in. I, wa- I was wa- finishing that up, and I, I see, my, I think my last recorded stage dive. That's not like during our band, really. You know, like it's during, it, it's during the hate breed portion. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and I, and I, I go for it. You know, but uh, yeah, shit hurts. When uh, when Hate Breed filmed the I Will Be Heard video, I tried to like I tried to do like cool stage dives to get into the video. That was a great. T- that, was, I, that was on tour with us. They played the Palladium with us, yeah. and they pl- they they had to play this song. Uh, oh my god! Um, they must have played it like twenty times. It was. It was like ten or twenty times. Yeah. <laughs> there was like cranes with like lights it's and stuff. It was time. crazy. And uh, I was always I was just like oh, I gotta do something really cool so I get into the video. I didn't get in the fucking video. Oh, Should have done a bad. handstand yeah. off one of the PA's. <laughs> yeah, I I did not. You know, there's some other videos that were filmed there uh, as well. Oh, yeah. Uh, there's a Pantera video that's a... Uh, I forgot what song because I don't like Pantera. I don't know, it's, Me neither. I, I, you <laughs> well, know, yeah. people always talk about, you know, if... Uh, he, I just never I just never got into it. I respect them all as musicians, you know, when they were around for sure. But it was, I was already a hardcore kid. And so to me, there was a lot of things that were derivative of what was happening, you know. And like when I saw the Mouth for War video, I'm like... That's you know that looks like a Chromax or Agnostic Front video. It's like it's the it's modeled. It looked to me it looked modeled. It looked like a a softer version, and they were you know great players. But I just never really. I, when people always say like it's Slayer or Pantera. Yeah, Slayer yeah, yeah, kills yeah, yeah, it yeah, every yeah. time. Yeah, that's of no course. Contest. Yeah, but they shot a video there. Um, that was uh, pretty cool. I have so many stories from playing. Mark- We'll have to save that for another. Did, did ICP? We'll save that for the Worcester special. No. Did ICP yeah, ever probably, shoot probably did, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Worc- I Worc- met Trey there. I met Trey in Worcester. Really? At at the Palladium That's in awesome. 1990, 1991. Wasn't he getting his 90? No, no, that was, was later. Oh, that was okay. later. But we were playing a show with, with, his, uh, with his first band, or pretty much only band, although he, he was in a primordial version of bane before bane became bane that's awesome um but we, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, Jake's got the footage on his uh, computer. If you want to watch, I do. Oh, let's go right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, I met him. I, I met him at a show there when the place was called EM Lowe's, and okay, it was yeah. before there was an upstairs. They used to put a stage before there was a permanent stage. They used to put a uh, like a like a temporary stage that they built out of plywood on the stairs. Um, yeah, it was totally, it was set up. So what was that room used for then? Was it It, just empty space? It was all one room. It was kind of open. It was, yeah, it was a totally different kind of thing going on. Hmm. Um, but yeah, we played, uh, we, we play a very early version of our band played there with his band and overcast. That's cool. Awesome. Not a bad show. Yeah. That's cool. (laughs) That was like five people there or something (laughs) back then. Um, so we, we talked a lot about the project and, uh, uh, so much you just gotta you gotta buy it and, and it, just like take it in you're not gonna be able to watch it it's, it's very special you know I, so much I, I i need to just shout out a few people yeah too, yeah because uh reed, R- yeah. reed was really helpful uh reed uh gave me a ton of photography for it that oh, i yeah. that i utilized for like the inner packaging um kurt was the star of the long road home and he's also the star of this one in the secondary packaging when you take it out of the slipcase. uh thomas hooper did a ton of art for us that we included in the thing 
Uh, he's an old friend that we we met on tour when he was I think he was just tat- he was an, an apprentice at a tattoo shop and started tattooing us in London and now he's you know a, a world renowned illustrator and tattooist and it's awesome to see him doing so well. Um, yeah, I mean there's, I, there's there's a huge list. Kazu from Japan gave us so much awesome footage. Uh, I can I can go on. Hate five says hate five six. Hate five six. Sunny. Yeah, yeah Sun- Sunny. Sunny gave us a bunch of cool stuff. And uh, I really like what Sonny's doing in trying to uh, document this this community in in a really positive way. And he was he's always been super supportive of our band and all the people that do the Hate Five Six stuff. So yeah, very cool. Hate Five Six is and awesome. We didn't we didn't get to really talk too much about the actual Blu-ray packaging, but the the image online doesn't really do it justice. Like it's it's like in this gold like mirror board. And it's black ink printed on top of it, so it like it shines. Just you'll when you walk down the aisle to go buy it, you'll see I, it. I it'll wasn't be, kidding about it. It will be sparkle. glowing. It will be glowing. It's, it's, it's like a gold bar. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like a golden ticket. It is a golden ticket. That's a great way of great way of describing. Yeah. It. So um, it's really cool. It's it's like this kind of a fold out uh, um, uh, CD wallet, but actually this Blu-ray's in there, obviously. But it's uh, it's really nice. <laughs> it's really nice. Yeah. I was I brought it into you that day, remember? Yeah, you did. And I was like, "Holy shit, this looks so fucking Rich good." Is, he's been geeking out about it for a it's, while now. Because you I know his interest. You know why? Wayne. It's it's because when we work so hard on stuff here, a lot of the times, like it, it goes unnoticed. It goes unnoticed. The, our our goal is to make releases look like they fell from the sky and they're perfect versions of whatever they are. We don't try to make them look all the same. We just, whatever they are and the character they're supposed to have, we want it to have it. So we get so psyched when something comes back and looks even better. With yeah. this one, it yeah. looked better than I expected. And that, that doesn't always happen. Sometimes, sure. sometimes, sometimes you do things because you don't know what's going to happen in print. No. Sometimes, so you just like it's a gamble. You hope that it's going to be something, but then it doesn't turn out that way. And there's not a lot you can do about it. You know, sometimes it's just that's just the way it happens. It, yeah. it, you know, you do your best best to prepare, but yeah, a lot of people don't understand that a, a lot of the control, especially with a small label, isn't there. Uh, you know, once we 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 do a, a solid job putting everything together, we do things in a professional manner. We send them out just as anybody else would. But if it was a Madonna record or if it was something like huge, like they would be able to reject, you know, a hundred thousand pieces of print and throw, you know, have them have them thrown away in, in recycling and, and start over. You know, we just have to accept a lot of uh, a lot of weirdness that happens. And it, yeah, again, it was it came out great. We're yeah, just like I was just totally psyched when that when I saw it. So, um, so I guess we'll we'll wrap up we'll wrap up the. Uh, converge talk here but um yeah the one last question um when you when you were creating the the blu-ray did you did you were you aware of the legacy like it would leave behind like were you thinking about that when when you were creating no no so well, like a hundred years from now when you're dead in the dirt dead in the you're dirt. just like Give what, no what is what let's, is let's what is on a high note what is what is some <laughs> what is some dude gonna think about my band i don't know you know and i sort of don't care you yeah know, like uh, for us it's 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 fun and it's a you know it's a positive cool outlet you know we've done we we've done and will continue to do things the way we want to do them as a as a band um i mean you guys saw like you guys don't see you guys see me every day but you don't see all four of us together much mm-hmm. and we don't see each other all that much but you saw us like the premiere we're goofs all everything that, yeah. that q a was so fun everything that comes out of our mouths is pure <laughs> idiocy when we're together it's like <laughs> Uh, that it, does come through in the Blu-ray. It does. We're completely not. You know, yeah. Well, especially, <laughs> it's very fun. Like the, yeah, it, it is fun. Some, some of the interviews. Your music's very serious most it of the is. time. Yeah. I, and 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 you know, sometimes live, it's just like, oh, let's you know, you. It, it's a little bit more fun. Yeah. There's there's sarcasm. There's yeah. I, there's irony. There's a lot of dark humor all the time. And <laughs> you know, it's it just comes from like years of traveling and being around each other and kind of sharpening humor on each other and we you know we we love each other like brothers and so like we treat each other like that and so yeah like you guys yeah, uh, you're mean to your brother we're very mean to each other <laughs> and it's but it's a it's a fun mean nobody yeah. nobody is is free from that you know we all we we all get get punished like in in you guys uh you guys kind of started when uh, you know uh kind of documenting things like at a personal level mm-hmm. could actually happen where like there was like 
camcorders where you could actually record things. And you, know, you think about bands in the past, you know, I wish there was more Black Flag stuff that you could yeah. watch from, you know, or like, but there's just not, you know, yeah, like, the, yeah, it was a lot, know, of, a, a lot of Super 8 and a lot of TV coverage or something like, you know, it's like small local television, right, channel, things right. that stuff. But yeah, I mean, there were actually and now every set's on YouTube. Every set's on YouTube. <laughs> you know what I mean? Kids nowadays. I used to I used to buy bootleg live sets at Second Coming Records in Cambridge, which was below Pix Poster Cellar when I was <laughs> when I was a kid. Um, but they always they had a VHS section on the when you walked in the door, and you could buy you know like random misfit sets or random whatever sets. So and cool. it, yeah, it was all it was awesome. It was you know pre pre YouTube or whatever, and all that stuff's on there now. Yeah. Um, just way more special. It's like, it's like going yeah. to the Japanese table at ECW and getting all those. <laughs> Which I used to do. Dude, all right. Let's talk death matches. <laughs> we, so th- there's a, wait, I think we talked about this on the podcast. Oh, we that did. You, he- when you I was, heard about Rich's. Uh, when I was like younger, yeah. Jake and Trey were at an, uh, an event. Yes. I would, we yeah, didn't I know to, each other. Obviously. I used to go to a, I used to go to a lot of events. I, I've been going. Well, I haven't gone in a really long time. I've, I've definitely fallen out of that world, but, um, yeah. Uh, Those were the days, though. Well, I I, I used to go to wrestling when I was a little kid. I used to go to the Boston Garden all the time, and like I was there when uh, when when Jimmy Snuka jumped on uh, Captain Lou Albano, which they probably did from the cage. From the cage, and they probably probably did it like uh, ten times that month. But they did it at the Garden. It was like a famous one. Um, but yeah, I used to, I used to go to all those, you know, I didn't, but I wasn't a big fan of the WWF. I was a, I was a, I, I grew up watching TV and I was into Georgia championship wrestling and WCW and like all the smaller little yeah. things, mid South, AWA world class. That was my shit. Um, so I never got to see a lot of the, the amazing, amazing things. But when ECW came around, it relit the fire underneath myself and Trey and a few of us. It was like the punk version of, of wrestling. It was. <laughs> it, it was it was a punk version of wrestling. Uh, there was, like, the one-man gang was there from World Class, which was cool. Um, and there were some dudes that were, you know, tied to the old world that we liked yeah. a lot. And they were doing – things were were more – were more like I guess the, our, our childhood, yeah. Know, even though they were turned up a notch, so yeah, we used to go and, and when when ECW was happening, we we would go to the shows and yeah. stuff. We were on TV a couple times. Oh yeah, yeah, it's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, I sat, I sat. I think I was in the second row when when Sabu broke his jaw on the table. We we were up top on, at that one. That was nasty. <laughs> it, was gro- it was the loudest ding you've ever heard in your life. Yeah. Like I the, everyone was just like. Everyone was just like stunned. He he, he yeah. backflipped and there was a table upside down. Hit his jaw on the. He didn't. The, oh, the, the table fell over when he went up top, so he didn't see the yes. table go down. Yes. So it, it. He was supposed to, I think, either go through the table or clear the table, and he <laughs> he miscalculated. Oh, uh, How, did he, he break rough. like all of his teeth? I think he broke his jaw or something like that. He came he, out. They, well, he left. For, he left for about thirty seconds. Crowd went really really quiet. And he came back with his face wrapped up, and I think <laughs> he literally just wrapped yeah, his jaw back whoever, together. Whoever he was, he was performing with, just laid down, and he got the pin. <laughs> like saw him come in and lay down, so he would he would pin didn't him, want to ruin then, the illusion. Yeah, and then ran out, and then everybody got up and gave him a standing ovation. That's but, crazy. But going to an ECW like event was just a lot like going to a hardcore it was show. A show. It like was a show. like there would be like a distro of like tape of like <laughs> tapes from like these like random Rich tapes. Had a table there. Oh man, yeah, I, mean, you're, you're, I made some money doing that. Uh, <laughs> those bootlegs, but yeah, there'd just be like a random table with like shit. You're just like, oh my god, like there's blowing. There's like a match that uh, some guy was in where the light, the, the ring lights on fire, and there's barbed wire. And there's a couple of those where the ring actually caught fire. Yeah, and, uh, the, or the ring collapsed sometimes. Yeah, I mean, like <laughs> it would, basically, you, you're you're watching simulated death, and you're and, and, and you're and you're hoping for accidents to happen in the simulated Jeez. death. Um, and and a, and a lot of them do. You know, I I even remember like when I was a kid watching wrestling, and guys would get cut and they cut themselves and stuff, and like. I remember Kerry Von Erich cutting his arm, and he cut an artery in his arm, and he was drunk or something wrestling, <laughs> and he, so he started bleeding out like while he was wrestling, and he's gushing, and you're just like, "Where is this coming from? No one's even acknowledging this," <laughs> and you're just like watching this fall apart, and you're like, my like 11 year old eyes, you're just like, "This is so crazy what I'm seeing right now." <laughs> yeah, you know, you just see like blading going wrong, but yeah, wrestling yeah. was fun back then. It's it's not it's not what it was. No, no it's, it's not what it is. It's now. A, it's not. a soap opera now, but I yeah. mean, it was a soap opera then, but yeah. it was a really fun. 
on one up until I, I watched it until about 1987, 1988. That was kind of my I, I fell off about then, and then I I got back into it yeah. with uh, with ECW for yeah. a couple of years. One of the guys, New Jack, actually admitted to trying to kill someone during it. Like he tried to murder the other guy. <laughs> I was there. He admitted to it. Yeah, he's like I, I wanted to kill him when I threw him off the rafter. Well, <laughs> well, there was a, there was an incident in Revere. At oh the, yeah, at the dog track. Yeah, which is you, you can find it on on YouTube. Yeah, um, but uh, yeah, there's a uh, there's there's a, the mass transit the incident. mass transit incident uh, <laughs> <laughs> where this is, I've never heard of any of this. It's so yeah, it's it's some some wrestling folklore. I mean, it's just like hardcore folklore. It, yeah, it's it a lot of it, exactly it's a lot like of half truths yes. and um, and just you know legends are born out of that sort of stuff. But cool. it's, yeah, it's um. Yeah, so yeah, you were you were at wrestling when I was. Yeah, That's that was cool. just funny. It's just like, you know, because I was like probably fourteen or I'm probably younger than that. I was probably probably twelve or thirteen. I don't know, but it's uh, it was funny that we ended up, we were both there. Um, we'll do a re- let's do a wrestling special edition, and we'll just talk. <laughs> we'll, we'll do a break. We'll, we'll and we should break down one wrestler. Oh yeah. my god. That would be fantastic. I was actually legitimately bummed out when Dusty Rhodes died. A yeah, few ago. I, yeah. It sounds like a new uh, a DW Network podcast. I think so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Add add it, add it CW list. talk. Wrestling with Rossi. Wrestling <laughs> <laughs> Rossi. Wrestling with Rossi. I like that oh, one. God. <sighs> All right. Careful what you wish for. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about other stuff. That's it. So yeah. Um, so go get it. Uh, Friday, November twenty seventh in stores. And, uh, yeah, if you did, or actually, I forgot to mention, if you did order the box set, we're going to be sending everyone downloads. Yes. So, they're going to download of it. You won't, like the box set's not going to be January? shipped until January. Yeah. yeah. It's going to take a while. It took, yeah. The vinyl takes a long time. It's just the vinyl. Yeah. It's just the vinyl. So, It'll be worth the wait. Yeah. Yeah. yeah what do you want? But we're going to let everyone, we're going to send everyone a download of the feature set. So. The irony, uh, well, not, not even the irony, the, the, the interesting part of that is I think we, we approved test presses this summer. Yeah. I think that's yep. like yeah. Yep. July, I want to say yep. something yep. like that. I mean, we have a project, you know, that's been nine months now. <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> just <laughs> yeah. It's just like it's just like yeah. It just keeps getting bumped. But okay. Um, we didn't do film school this week, but you, we're gonna, it's going to be back <laughs> next episode thirty two. We're, do, we're doing something special for so, next yeah. week. Do you want to just get into it? Yeah, 32 let, movies? <laughs> 32 movies in movie two weeks. Movie a day. <laughs> Speed round. Movie a day. We're catching you up, Rich. <laughs> All right. Let's, uh, yeah. All the weird Japanese horror. That's right. What do you got for me on the next one? Oh, you want the... Let me... Let me we're doing a giveaway thing first. Oh, okay. First, um, yeah. Sorry, I'm yelling. I'm really excited about this. So, we're doing a pin giveaway with Do Not Disturb uh, store. Um, they make enamel pins, and she just did a Stanley Kubrick collection. So, next week, we're having a contest. It's a Photoshop contest. Oh. So, Photoshop our ugly mugs on your favorite movie poster. Oh, okay. First, second, and third place. Are we going to provide headshots for the people? Yeah, well, show notes, you know? We'll, we'll the show notes. <laughs> Put in the they show notes. Yeah, yeah. They can just yeah, creep yeah, yeah. like they normally so, do. So, do, um, yeah, your favorite movie poster. Put our face on there. Put Rich's face, whatever. Um, first, second, and third prize. Get a free pin mailed to you. Okay. And then also, go to Do Not Disturb dot store dot com use the coupon code deathwish and you get 10 percent off so these are all movie inspired enamel exactly. pens she so had, you'll find she, some cool stuff um, there they're really cool i took a look at them yeah it's an awesome yeah. store uh they have like um a bunch of other stuff she had um uh like beer koozies or soda koozies whatever pick your poison. polar polar koozies polar koozies shout out um <laughs> shout all out sorts of stuff yeah a bunch of awesome enamel <laughs> pins and um she's got a lot of other cool stuff planned so okay Go check that out, and then do the contest. Get a free pin. Very cool. We're going to be cool. giving away HAL 9000 from 2001, uh, Joker's helmet from uh, Full Metal Jacket, and a typewriter from The Shining. So, very cool very pins. Cool. Very and cool. And so, you ready for next week? Yes. What am I doing next week? All right. So, the pins are the Kubrick collection. So, next week, you're going to watch 2001, A Space Odyssey. Oh. Yes. Has everyone seen that movie? I haven't. Probably. Oh, oh wow. Yeah, I haven't seen it either. So Jake, should. Jake, have you seen that one? What is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, texting. Hey, 2001. Man. I think, I've, yeah, of course I've seen 2001. Yeah. yeah. So, I, I want to I wanna see... This is this is a very notoriously this, out there movie, so I want to hear Rich's take on what the hell's going on. It's a it's a fantastic movie. It's it was one of my favorites, especially in school. 
but uh it's yeah it's it's a deep one there's a lot of interesting things going on what year was this one made do you know 70s 80s oh at the 80s okay am i wrong i want to say 79 yeah okay cool I, late uh, 70s early 80s sounds cool. great very cool it's on netflix right now is perfect it? there you go oh i can stream it on my new apple have, tv i don't have yeah. to rent it or go get my blu-ray that's good <laughs> is so what, 68 what, just, what do you guys 68? think wow I was really wrong 68 yeah. holy jesus <laughs> that was 68 really that's what it holds up well that Google is says. that is amazing is it in, is it in color yes <laughs> okay i yes. don't care he only has colors were invented by <laughs> <then>. <laughs> they have colors back then <laughs> <laughs> there were colors. I thought only the Wizard of Oz was. How about how about like a holiday rom com? Uh, love Actually, I love Love Actually. <laughs> it's a good one. My one of my favorites is The Family Stone. Oh, that's a that's a feel good one. Are you talking like general season or like Christmas? Uh, well, mainly Christmas. Right. That's well, well, once we get a little closer. Yeah, I'll, I'll have. I'll, well, there'll be a couple more episodes. How about just, just don't do like a um, Home Alone two. Don't do like Christmas Story or something like that. It's just lame. I've seen that. Shit. Plus, I don't. No offense. I don't. I don't want to rewatch that. So. Yeah, I'm sick of that movie. Yeah, I've seen it way too how many about, times. How about how about a Die Hard what, done? Die Hard's so good. The first Rich, have one. Have you seen Die Hard? Shit. No. Yo, spoiler alert. Though we Rich, uh, your muffs. <laughs> <laughs> don't ruin it for me because I. Uh, that, You've never seen Die Hard. No. It, well, that's we're a, doing that. Then. Hold on. Is that a holiday movie? Technically. Yes. It's okay. one of the best holiday movies. It's probably, it's probably you know. What, I, someone best. told me like, yeah, we watch Die Hard every Christmas. I'm just like, so good. Die Hard, like, it doesn't Die make Hard Two is pretty good. Uh, I, like I, don't, it. I don't think it doesn't get a lot of love, but I like it. It's it's pretty good. How about you just do only sequels, such as <laughs> Police Academy Three? Oh, I love Police four? Academy. Uh, I've seen them all. I really? Think I have. Yeah, yeah, I loved Police Academy. Of course, I like the guy that did the voices. Yeah. Yeah, that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> Are you wearing the tackleberry? The fuck, um, tackleberry was cool too. But yeah, I, I think that would be pretty good. We, how about we do? How about we talk about Prometheus? Oh, yeah, hmm. if I, uh, <laughs> we could, but we could. I, oh, we talk be, about like the, the world, the world of Alien. Would be. I want. I wanted to do Alien for Halloween, but there's too many to choose from. Um, but yeah, Alien would be good when. You know, the, so they're making a new, a new Prometheus. Have you started watching Ash vs. Evil Dead? Yes. What do you think of it? I love it. I think it's pretty good. Yeah. Do I have to watch Army of Darkness before I watch that? It would help you. Yeah. yeah. It would okay, help you. I'll be, watch that first. They, I'm going to watch actually, that They actually, they don't really call back to Army of Darkness that much, but they do a lot to Evil Dead 1 and 2. Yeah, they, well, yeah two mainly 2. Well, because really 2 is a remake of 1. Yeah. I mean, it's it's essentially a remake. It's pretty close. Yeah. I'm, I was a huge, huge Sam Raimi fan when yeah, I was... Same here. Yeah. And I, I, I had his college films that I think are on... Uh, I, I traded them actually for some con- converge stuff to to a guy like way back when on vhs they were pretty cool <laughs> That's um awesome. i think i have them in the office somewhere um but they were like yeah we have to have a screening yeah we should have a screening of that it, it would be really really good i think one of the pro- my projector's still here it is halloween party yeah that'd be death awesome. talk at we're the movies go. death talk at the oh, oh. yeah we, we got we got something planned for that i don't want to say it yet though okay um but that'd be pretty cool um I don't know. I what, just watching horrible movies in general. You know, some of the worst movies you've ever seen have rich sit- like Indiana Jones. No. All right. You know, <laughs> I, damn. I, I enjoy I enjoy um, one and two. Um, three. I didn't really. It didn't connect with me. It was pretty lame. Yeah. And then uh, the Crystal Skull. I went yeah. to. I was like, Alien Skulls. Yeah, it was tough. Shit sucks. Yeah. <laughs> like, it just. It, it was just kind of a bum out. I wanted it to be something better than that. Um, but uh, yeah. What do you think of Star Wars? You into Star Wars, guys? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I, I didn't don't really my... give a shit about Star Wars. I like Empire Strikes Back as a movie. Oh, you don't care about Star Wars? Um, not really. Uh, I didn't get I've, my ticket I've never, yet. I've never been a huge Star Wars guy, but I'm excited for the new. I'm I'm caught up in the hype. It's hard not to get. I actually I haven't watched the trailer. Um, I, I just I I've know. watched the trailer, but I haven't watched anything else. Cause I don't want to. I just want to yeah. go in there and watch it. You know. Um, what about the new Moby Dick movie? Oh God, it's news. <laughs> oh come on! <laughs> what about the new Frankenstein movie? Oh God, that oh. looks great too. <laughs> They're both uh, combine the two double header. Why not? Trey will go see both, and he'll tell us about them. Oh yeah, so. well, Trey will see everything. Yeah. yeah um, well, not necessarily, but uh, but you know, th- there's some there's some okay stuff out there. I want to see. I I'm kind of curious about Star Wars, but I don't give a shit about the franchise. I give a shit about like the Alien franchise. Yeah. 
I hope the new Prometheus will make. Did up you like for Prometheus? I fucking loved Prometheus. Really? really? And Caleb yeah. said, Dude, we were talking about you guys. Week, you guys are killing really me. Bad. It has one amazing scene, and then the rest of it is like yeah, painful. It's. I thought it was cool. It, it's cool. I, the the new one is now called Alien something oh, or other. They changed the name for the third time. Yeah. Uh, I'm into it. I'll, I'll check it I'm, out. Don't. I'm there opening night. Don't get me wrong, but. Yeah, yeah. Right, that, it, it'll the, be good. The surgery scene in Prometheus was so fucking good. What about did Did you make him watch uh, Mad Max? Yeah. Oh yeah, we went to yeah, the movies. That was for Death that. Wish goes me, to the movies. Oh, okay. Fury Trey. That's right. That's right. Okay. He, and well, Caleb. he hasn't. He hasn't seen. You haven't seen Fury the old Road? One. Oh, no, no, no. One? He only saw Fury. He only saw Fury. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I haven't seen the old one. So. Oh, shit, man. Well, you got I like that one a lot. Yeah. I don't know if you would like the I older think that was my favorite movie of the new movies this yeah, year. It's, it's amazing. I, but I've only seen like two, so. Yeah. <laughs> well, I enjoy uh, that movie. Yeah. Let's talk about other shit. All I'm, right. I'm sorry. I'm a tangent, man. That's I'm okay. fucking you guys up. I'm sorry. <laughs> Let's go to um, feedback. Oh, okay. yeah. We got some feedback. Oh, yeah. We got a lot. Lots of feedback. Um, so, uh, if you want to, uh, participate in the show, you can email us, deathtalk at deathwishing.com. You can also, you can also tweet at us, use the hashtag AskDeathTalk, or call a Death Talk hotline. And I forget what the number is, so hold on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. 1-800-D-Talk. Hey, I should, uh, I should put it out there that I need to do some more, um, Death Wish dialogues, and I had a short list of people I wanted to talk to. Um, but if there's anybody out there that that people would like for me to talk to, that I'm that I may know, you know, other musicians and artists and stuff, uh, put it in the Ask Death Talk thing or something. Yeah, email us. Email yeah. us because I'm curious if there's a I don't know somebody I haven't thought of or whatever. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, the we actually got we actually got someone saying in the review that they in the reviews yeah. on iTunes that they want more dialogue. I, I would like to put a formal request in for yeah. Trey. <laughs> I would love to do that. That would be awesome. It would be weird because he's because he, he would hate every second of it, but I would love every second. <laughs> of it. You, you know, he would fake hate it though. He'd love it the the whole time. You and guys would just talk about insulation the whole time or something like that. It would <laughs> suck. Insulation. No, it would be. <laughs> <laughs> it, would, it, would be, it would be awesome. How's your insulation this hey, year? Hey, yeah, you want, let's, let's talk. About, yeah, we were, yeah, gonna make sure his, his house is properly well, insulated. I, I, do, I do know Trey is having a hell of a time with his basement insulation. Well, you know, old house, dude. It's an old. He's gotten yeah, yeah. He does very old. So that phone number it is seven five four seven zero three eight two five five. That's seven five four. Is that the Howard number? <laughs> no. no, that's what, it's like one eight eight asshole or something. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's seven five four seven zero D talk. Oh, that's hard. Yeah. <laughs> we we couldn't we couldn't afford the one eight hundred. That's totally fine. I like it. All right, here's here's one. We put that money into the deluxe the deluxe box. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Here's one from uh Brad from North Carolina. That was a good one. Yo, this is Brad from North Carolina. Um I just called some poor uh girl. I I missed one of the numbers on the phone number and I called the wrong number and <laughs> she was really confused. Um but I had to call and say Big up to whoever keeps putting that Carly Rae Jepsen on the playlist. <laughs> that shit is my jam. I'm bumping it right now. It's 10 o'clock on a Saturday. Uh, and it's, it's hitting the spot. Just what I needed. Um, also, big up a long time ago uh, for whoever put up the uh, Planes and Taken for Stars cover of uh, Unbroken. You know, I don't know. Uh, whatever that song was. I don't remember who did that. Uh, Fall on Proverbs. Probably one of those. Songs. Really good. You guys are the best. Keep it up. Thanks, Brad. What was the nice question one. in there, though? There's no. He just. He, oh, you just, you don't have to ask a question. You oh, can just I'm call. Sorry. It's oh. general general praise for you guys. Yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah. I, I mean, I mean, hey, it's nice to hear. Yeah. And, you know. So Mark, Mark, you got a shout out for putting Carly Rae Jepsen. Yeah, that shit's awesome. Carly yeah. Rae. Also, love the timestamp. Ten o'clock on a Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> the, the mystery of AM or PM is like really intriguing. We'll never know. He may have uh, had a few four locos before he uh, <laughs> called the, called the Death Talk hotline. I don't you think never they, know. Do they make that still? I don't think Aren't so. Aren't those illegal now? Shout out to four loco. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think the, I don't think so. Yeah. So all right. Cool. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Brad. Very cool. Uh, we got an email from Nolan. Nolan's calling me out in this email. 
He's calling you out. Yeah. Oh, I know what this one is. Yeah. Um, uh, it's a long email, but I'm not going to read the whole thing. But uh, he said, you guys question the ease and methods of pirating music nowadays on Death Talk, on the last Death, Death Talk episode. I think it was a couple episodes ago. Um, we, well, here's some screenshots of the biggest, most popular private trackers of Music Torrance. And he sent some screenshots of him. Oh, damn, dude. Hit with, up the FBI With right our records now, in there. Yeah, We've so, got screenshots. I'm thinking we have to track uh, Nolan down. Send send the police after him. <laughs> yeah, we, we, I mean, Nolan, you just... But on. he did say, he said, um, honestly, I... Uh, I plead the fifth. I, I still do this when labels don't include digital downloads with a purchase. We um, actually talk about this all the time. Do, digital downloads, specifically. Do all right, all right, Everyone buys records here, obviously. Do you guys yes. use your d- digital downloads when you get a record? One out of ten times. Very uh, infrequently. It, it, honestly, it depends. If it's not like on Spotify or something, then yeah, I do, but... Yeah, I don't. I never redeem mine. Do you redeem yours, Jake? No, usually I don't. But you know, it's it's. I'm I'm in that weird transitional point in my music listening. Where, yeah, like I'm out of convenience. I've been using Spotify a lot on one machine because it has my 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 big speakers hooked up to it. Yeah. Um, and I don't maintain my iTunes like I did like a year ago or something like that. And honestly, iTunes has been trying. Well, Apple's been trying to confuse the user for the last year to basically use their streaming service yeah. and they've made it hard to access your own It's a stuff. goddamn mess right now. Yeah, yeah it, it really is. So I just try to leave my collection of digital music uh, alone. But I have a lot of stuff from, you know, a year or so ago that I did use, you know, download codes for and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I like having that. I, I like thinking, uh, I, I like knowing that a record label took the time to give me a variety of options and actually yeah. give a shit about uh, That's true. you know the the listener wanting options. There's definitely people that still use it yeah. out there. No, I'm, like, I'm the can... worst because I'll buy an album, I'll never use the download code, but if it doesn't come with one, I'm like Pff. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm, like, I'm, like I'm huffy about it. Like, you, why wouldn't they have that? You know what used to be frustrating were the protected CDs were Oh my god. Uh, oh. I, I I know I, I have a few that were that I that I couldn't burn and I and I liked I liked burning them and having them and using, you know, an I, iPod classic and I would purchase the music and I had it and I I feel that once you purchase it you should be able to do whatever you want with it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. Um and people talk about like, I I don't think downloading is really the death of the the, the 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 big death rattle of stuff. It's just a different, it's just a different, you know, new way of, of you know listening to music and appreciating artists. You want to know about what is the, what was the death of fucking music? CD used CD stores. Oh yeah. You know why? Think about it. Well, yeah, because someone just buy it and return it right away. Well, buy it, return it right away. But that second and third and fourth and fifth sale, what's where, where's that money going? To the to the store. Just the store, yeah, yeah. So no, no, no artists, no record label, nobody that's actually involved no. in the creating and yeah, promotion. Really thought of it. About it like that. I think the important thing too for, um, for you know, labels and things like that is that you can't dictate how people are going to listen to music. Exactly, you have to adapt to them, and that w- that's a cool thing about Death Wish is that we've never. We've never, you know, we, you know, the illegal downloading stuff happened. It wasn't like it wasn't like, oh my god, this is happening. We need we need to stop it right away. No. You know, we just said, well, this is how people are going to do it. So let's find a different way to uh, keep our business running. Well, and, yeah, I feel, I feel if you offer somebody a quality, a quality whatever, if it's a quality, you know, piece of clothing, it's a quality music, it's a quality package, whatever it is. You know, people are going to want to support it, and they're mm-hmm. going to want to support things that know that it's not just like a, you know, that's just like a, a shitty product. And yeah, and I think we can also agree that you can't be a one-trick pony. You can't. No. If you, you can't be a record label. You have to be more. You yeah. have to be like like we do. We do distribution. We have a store. We. Uh, we, we do so many random things. Well, that, we, we, podcast. All, we also, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We do a yeah. podcast because that's you know that's the way to connect with people that um, enjoy our label. But at the same time, it's like these are the things that you want to do as a guy in a band too. For like from the, the the time before downloading and stuff, like back then they just cared about what you sold and that's what it was. Like when we started Death Wish, there was already downloading of music. You know, we wanted to start a, a label that that also promoted artists and actually promoted them 365 days a year. So even if we don't have an immediate release from a band, we'd still promote their tours. We still promote what they're up to. We still talk about the bands because it helps everybody. 
mm-hmm. you know we if we, just because we believed in in you know a release you know a year or two ago that we put out doesn't mean we don't be, you know believe in like a band's new release you know we want to make sure that like people are excited it helps everybody if a band yeah. grows you know that's that's awesome for everybody yeah yeah it's like, i think we talked about the other day i was like you're not really competing for sales anymore you're almost competing for people's time and there's just so many ways to entertain yourself these days and Mm -hmm. and music's just one of them so uh you're 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 just you know you're just trying to you know and people enjoy music and that will never go away people are are always going to listen to music um i think that's also like getting closer to like the future of labels being like tastemakers yeah they are now yeah yeah of course of course and and that stuff's cool and that stuff's fun for us too to be able to do those things like playlists and podcasts and uh lets us kind of yeah that's all the fun stuff yeah 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 so i'm glad we do that but um uh nolan uh said i i thought rich was tech savvy come on son <laughs> well okay he i am a, tech savvy okay he brought up a good point it is really easy to illegally yeah i think stuff, i think the I point think was the argument the argument is it's just as easy to do it legally yeah so i was gonna like say why, i well, understand it's very easy to download something torrent it get a get a get a an, an ip thing that changes your ip address <laughs> whatever uh uh but it's so much easier just to pay ten dollars a month well, well, <laughs> can, can i just say from a from, yeah. a from a guy in a band perspective again like I don't believe in the, the way Spotify pays bands as being a positive. You know, I think yeah. that it's obviously it's it's weighted in such a way that's you know it, it's it's horrible for for independent artists. But you know what? It's something. And if a, a, if a download of a record is giving us nothing except a, the promise of a potential, you know, maybe a potential purchase of a record or apparel or, or apparel or something down the line. Mm-hmm. Spotify is giving us something. Yeah. iTunes is giving us something. Any of the streaming things, YouTube, whatever, they're all giving the artist something in some capacity. Mm -hmm. So I would rather pay... Like, I used to buy one record a week when I was a kid. That Mm -hmm. was my my limit. That's what I would save and try to buy one record a week if I could. That was like 10 bucks. Anywhere between like, you know, 8 and like 15 bucks or something like that. So... Now ten dollars a month, I can listen to essentially whatever I want, and, and at least some of that money is going to something. Fuck yeah, like yeah. whatever. You know, that, to me that that's good. I, I would, I want to do that. I want to be able to play, you know, and listen to those records, and I listen to them there on the streaming service, and then I pre-order them or I order them, you know, from directly. Yeah, that's what I mean too. Like I, a lot of records, I buy the actual record, but I'm listening to it on Spotify. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like you listen to it when you have time to put on the turntable yeah, and listen here. to it. Yeah, but. Yeah, um, oh, he actually did have an actual question here. Too late. <laughs> As for an actual question. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, um, do you guys all have iPhones or what? You always talk about streaming music and streaming services, but I have all my digital music collection on a 64 gigabyte SD card in my Galaxy S5. Nobody else does this, or do you all have significantly I, more music than I do? I don't sync music anymore. I just, yeah, I just, I, either. I had a Galaxy for a while, but I'm, I'm on the iPhone train now. Yeah, I just use Spotify on my iPhone now. Same. I had an Android phone too for a while. It's audio RIP. Oh, <laughs> shit, Mark. Let Sorry, I forgot to mention that. Let it that. die, Mark. Mark uses Stop. uses his Sidekick One. Oh, <laughs> that was a great phone. It was. A, we actually talked about it the other day. Yeah, yeah. That was a fantastic. That was phone. like whoever had the phone. Sidekick was like the cool. Yeah, place. I You're used like, to. Oh shit! You have a Sidekick. I you can to, use Aim on yeah, your phone. You. <laughs> that was so <laughs> cool. No lie. No, I think I started at Death Wish around that time that it came out, and like you definitely had a Sidekick. Oh my god! So I, you flipping, had two. You had. I can see you flipping the phone and flipping your. Long well, a couple hair guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that actually happened. People have made fun of me about that. Uh, there was a couple guys in the office that had that. And uh, the long hair or the side. Both. Uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, and uh, I think I remember it was one of like the first things I bought because I, I had like a job, like like an actual job, Sick. and uh, and uh, you know I was out of college and and uh, working at Deathwish part time, working at a grocery store part time. But I was like I had two jobs at the time and I was like I bought a fucking sidekick and I was like sidekick and a six pack of Miller Lite <laughs> Coors Light Coors, Coors, Coors Light yeah. sorry <laughs> so I was like this is cool and um <laughs> did the mountains go blue back then I or? used to flip that screen up and down just to make noises and and, and you know bother everyone in the office so that was cool uh but yeah no I don't <laughs> wait, wait you harassing everyone in the office yeah That's, a little bit you know I don't believe it no I was a good kid um uh John from New Jersey 
Uh, hey everyone, I wanted What's to up, John? take a minute to thank you guys for keeping Death Talk the most enjoying podcast to listen to. Enjoyable. He's, okay. I'm helping him. That's good. Thank you. Uh, hearing everyone make jokes and being smart asses to each other makes my work feel a lot less stressful. That's good. That's nice. nice. He, he wrote a long one too. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but it was, it was very um, nice. Thanks very nice. Thank you. Um, my question for you guys, have you ever experienced a paranormal activity in your area? Oh, P.S. Yeah. My favorite record in my collection is the free self-defense record Mark and Caleb gave to me at This Is Hardcore. Cool new tunes oh, oh, for life. Oh, oh. Yeah, he what? was the first one that came up, and he was like, "Yo, is it true?" And I was like, "Yes." And he was like, "Cool new tunes." <laughs> yeah, I think he was one of two or three people Paranorm- who sang, so. paranormal activities. Guys, anyone? I mean, I I've got like our old office if, was does haunted. Does no one right? else have anything? Old office was pretty haunted. Yeah. Um, it was I mean, just a se- huge... The secret shitter alone. The secret shitter. Yeah, we told you about the secret shitter <laughs> the other just day. just talking about that. But yeah, that, I mean, that building was a... I don't know. We were trying to figure out how big it was, but it was like 50,000 square feet or bigger. It was, it was a massive, you know, four-story... Yeah, it was really weird. Building. We only had like four deaths in the middle of the 50,000 square feet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was, in, uh, it was in Salem, too. Right? It was in Salem. Yeah. But, uh, right there alone. Yeah, right. Right. Well, you know... I, it's it's actually funny that you say that because back then when the witch trials happened, uh, everything uh, Beverly was also called the uh, Greater Salem, and a lot of like the weird shit that went down, like the actual burnings and stuff, happened all in the woods out here. Oh, like it happened. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. It didn't. Yeah, it didn't, it didn't happen so like right nuts. downtown. Like all that stuff happened like over here. Yeah. Right? Like they're they're right not going to celebrate yeah, right. where you know where that that, that wild shit was happening. Yeah. But uh, they made touristy areas. But you know a lot of the sketchy stuff happened in the woods. Oh good. That's so that's so Makes comforting. You feel so mm-hmm. much better. I wanted to make you feel <laughs> better. I want to comfort you guys. <laughs> but yeah, that building was pretty haunted. Um, it had some some weird shit going on. But you know it was just a big old crazy building. You know you'd be. One person in fifty thousand square feet. It was scary as shit. Uh, at, I would work late. I would work, you know, like midnight, one o'clock in the morning. I'd be the only one in there, and you have to leave. It's bananas. Yeah, you, know? <laughs> you might as well just stay the whole night at that point, right? Uh, I did a couple of times, but uh, I stayed. In, I've stayed here too. Yeah, you know, this building doesn't really have any any weird. weird it just creaks stuff a lot. Going on. Yeah, yeah, it creaks a lot. Yeah, it's an it's an old factory building that's settling to the ground. But uh, yeah, the other old one was pretty pretty nuts. When I came back from this is hardcore two thousand six, I slept at the Shetland Park building. Mm-hmm. It was the worst thing I've ever done in my life. <laughs> I think I slept on that couch that was like in between you and uh, Trey's desk. Yeah, yeah, and uh, it was like terrifying. I was just like, I can't do this. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah, I yeah. couldn't wait for the sun to come up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, please, just waiting. Hurry up. <laughs> you're, you're real exposed. <laughs> Uh, I've never had nothing crazy. You know, I always thought I saw like this fisherman dude in in, in the hallway. <laughs> I've never had anything crazy. I've just always seen this fisherman guy, this guy with a fishing rod, <laughs> what? tackle. I I don't know. Like I I have this like weird memory as a kid where I was walking down this hallway Jerry and I don't Grandpa. remember. I don't remember if it was a dream or like if it was like real life when I was a little kid. Because kind of, and I was like, ah, I saw this fisherman at the end of a hallway. Stop. Wow. That's we're, it. We're yeah. going fishing, Richie. <laughs> <laughs> it's your great grandpa. Yeah, just watching that's all you. I have. No, that's great, Richie. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I I, I envision like a, a creep show too. Like thanks for the ride, lady thing. <laughs> like, like, come on, Richie. We're going to catch yeah, Richie. <laughs> <laughs> I've never I've never seen anything, but I, I live in a uh, like a really old. House. It's a museum, technically. You live in the attic of a museum. Yeah. So. Yeah. That one room is fucked up. It's fucking there's, creepy, dude. So basically, there's like an apartment. It's not creepy at all. It's pretty. It creepy. should be, but it isn't. When I when I first moved there, I was like, "This is going to be creepy." No, nothing. Yeah, if you ever go on a tour of Rowley, you might go into Caleb's uh, apartment. <laughs> yeah, <it's, laughs> yeah. so, but basically, I've never seen anything there. Tar with that one room. Yeah, so that's so the apartment is upstairs. It's where I live. Um, there's a toy room. So it's this little room in like your my toys area. I wish they were my toys. Okay. But um they're all old antique children's toys oh, and that's like, so scary. Yeah. yeah. And there's you also pay me to live there. <laughs> yeah, these guys have seen it. The that's door crazy. opens by creepy. itself all the time. Like I'll be walking by and I'll just like Cree! And these guys were like, "How do you not freak out? I just, I just close it. There's like and an just walk by. crib. That's yeah, there's a bunch there. of cribs like, and like old no. like beds that have like the people's like where they lay in them. Like they're all like set in where like the bodies were. <laughs> 
it's, it's pretty creepy. That's why when Caleb yeah, comes in in the morning, it looks like he had a paranormal uh, experience every time. <laughs> he just hasn't drank coffee yet. He drinks four <laughs> cups of coffee and comes to work. Yeah, and then I get more coffee during the day. But uh, yeah, there's a bunch of like mice skeletons in the attic and stuff. It's cool. It smells great. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone else? No, nah, it's. Okay. I haven't really seen Worcester's good. At all. Worcester's okay. It's probably not, but I haven't seen anything. <laughs> Definitely a lot of spirits in there. Yeah. Uh, and then one more, one more from um, Stephen from Delaware. He says, "Big fan of the podcast. Recently, I've been thinking about how I'll be unable to be in a touring band because I'm currently in college to be a nurse, and when I get to and when I get to working, uh, when I get to the working world, I won't have time for practice and being able." Uh, to play shows or tour. Hey, um, uh, just to stop right there. Caleb works like more than forty hours every week, and yeah. he's in like six bands <laughs> yeah. and plays shows all the time. So yeah, yeah just you give can it do whatever you want. I'm in. I, I'm in a a band and work six thousand hours a week and exactly. do a, a yeah. billion other stuff. You can uh, you can always make it work. Yeah. Yeah. You just have to find the time. It sucks, but. It's also awesome. So he says, mm-hmm. uh, "Drink more coffee. Don't yeah. do that. Don't do that. <laughs> so in my, do, that, do that. Do but that. Do that. But do it. Yeah, <laughs> get some Death Wish coffee. Yeah. So in my eyes, the next best uh, thing is having your own label. Since you work at one of my favorite labels, how should I go about this? With starting a label or working a label? I guess he he would be starting it because he he'd do it as a side thing. Uh, from the uh, if anything that would take just as much time it would take more more, th- more yeah. time and probably more more frustrating to be honest and, and money and yeah I would just start a band yeah yeah a lot of people I mean I think everyone well uh, everyone that has run a label or something kind of just fell into it it's not I mean you obviously want to do it but like I don't know yeah. I was in a band and then wanted to put out a record so yeah, I started so, a label <laughs> you think, know what I mean and like I, not not the I don't. I don't mean to be shitty, but we talked about this on one of the first oh, episodes. Oh yeah, yeah. There's like, another episode, like at, at length. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah. But and you guys, I'm actually, sure it would be good to get Jake's perspective. My perspective is it. It's so simple. You just, just, just do stuff that makes you happy. Yeah, it's pretty much it. You know, every uh, if you look at somebody like, um, like. Greg Ginn or like uh, Glenn Danzig start Plan Nine. Greg Ginn started SST. Um, Brett started Epitaph. Mm-hmm. Um, it was just all guys in bands starting labels. You know, Steve Albini started a label like back then. Like everybody started labels to release their own stuff, and you know they were all in bands. It just and, starts with being a band. And I think a lot of people like that were are. Uh, they're unhappy with something, so they decided yeah. to do something on their own. Yeah, well, you know what I mean, not necessarily unhappy. Unhappy sometimes, yes, yeah. but an aspect of it, you an, know? an aspect of it, or you just don't have the opportunities. You know, like no, nobody wanted to help. You know, like our band when we st- when we started doing stuff, and we when we actually wanted to reach out to labels, like every label aside from EVR just thought we were dog shit and didn't touch us. Yeah, yeah, you know, and didn't really, you know, we were we were young kids or whatever and, you know, eventually that led, you know, led to some disillusionment and uh, some realizations on our end to and that led to the start of Death Wish. You know, I think everybody has some sort of common road that's how they get there if it's that they just want to put out their own demos and they do oh, i'll put out my friend's demo or i'll put out a seven inch it's just what you do mm-hmm. you know it's pretty it, it's a pretty simple road you know just do it literally do it yourself it's so cliche but it's true just just do it yeah yeah and i know like i mean when 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 you were putting out, out records back in the day you do like a seven inch because that's usually like something that's a little bit more affordable than an lp it was it was actually really inexpensive at yeah. the time and, lps um, too were, were a little vinyl was was way less expensive than cds when we first started and that's why you know you had a lot of punk rock especially when cds started happening you had it rooted in there and then cassettes were relatively inexpensive too yeah yeah and then yeah, CDs came along, but now I think like yeah, he, he even mentioned in the email, do a tape, put out a tape, exactly. do something, yeah. do something that you can that you can um, uh, is is attainable because right now it's like vinyl is just so long. Yeah. I mean, you can do it, but you're waiting a while for yeah. it. So or or I mean, just do digital releases for yeah. a little while and 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 learn to to promote bands that you believe in that way. You know, I mean, that's the the easiest and fastest way. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. And uh, who who cares if you're monetizing it? You're just at least getting your uh, you know, you're getting your hands sort of dirty in in that in, in the mix. Yeah. Cool. Also, I think he said he's um, uh, studying to become a nurse, right? Yeah. Play, start a band, playing your scrubs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> playing play your scrubs. Yeah, it'd be a great shtick. Everybody would be like, "Oh shit, the nurses, they're great." <laughs> the nurses. Yeah, I'm sure Jesus. it's been done, but you know. Oh jeez. There's a couple of bands with nurse in the name. 
It's true. <laughs> it uh, okay. Well, that's it for uh, <laughs> feedback. Words of wisdom. Uh, by yes. Some schmuck. Yes. Yeah, so again, if you want to be a part of the show, uh, hey, Kayla, you- what are you wearing? Are those <laughs> scrubs? Are those? Are those? Oh, those. These? Oh, so oh, these? These? These are all? Uh, yeah, just you know, just well, came from work. scrubs or yeah. our scrubs? Oh. <laughs> Are they? <laughs> if you want to get part of the show, email deathtalk at deathwishing.com. Uh, use the hashtag AskDeathTalk on Twitter or uh, give us a call, 75470-DETALK. Uh, what were we into? Yeah. What are we into? This is always a fun part of the show. I've, I've got a lot this week. But go ahead. Go ahead. Do something. I don't want to start because I've, been, start I've been talking a lot. All right, Chris, you start. He doesn't want to start. I'm still watching Narcos, but I, I just started uh, Jessica Jones. Uh, oh, I, I don't oh, yeah. know. That's why I was going to about say. it. Yeah, I'm only one episode in. But what is that? It's, it's like it's uh, Marvel. New oh, some Marvel yeah. shit. Okay, Netflix. it's on Netflix. So, yeah. so. Oh, okay, cool. Exclusive on Netflix. So cool. Yeah, Caleb, uh, Jessica Jones, Fallout Four. Yep. Oh yeah, Fallout Four. Fallout Four. Everyone's playing that. It's out. Yep. Not me. I'm addicted. I'm not either. I don't know. I don't have that game either. You asked me though. You're like, yo. I, I want it. You're yeah. Like, you're like, get real with me. Should I get a PlayStation? For <laughs> yeah. <out?" laughs> <laughs> add it to my add it to my uh, Christmas list. But yeah. you you yeah. haven't even been playing your Nintendo stuff. So why get a PS? I, it's been a little busy lately, so I haven't been able to play many. You had a games. Wii, right? I still have a Wii U and a 3DS. We use the newer one, like the HD version. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't have a system. <laughs> <Not yet. laughs> I, have no, I have no system. No. <laughs> do, you, do, you like, do you like video games at all? I don't know, actually. No, not really. I mean, like uh, Atari and, and Nintendo when I was a kid. But even Nintendo was mainly like Castlevania and Punch Out. That was pretty yeah. much it. Awesome. Yeah. Um, that was. Oh, who's still in a car? <laughs> oh, I can see Shut it. Up. It's over there. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, there's oh, there's two now. <laughs> oh, cool, cool, awesome. Uh, but yeah, I'm I'm not a big video game game guy. I think they're they're pretty awesome. Um, but I don't I don't have the time for that sort of thing. I but by, by the time I leave here, I'm awake for maybe two hours before I yeah before I'm 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 done for the night. You know, I I like making stuff. I'm just kind of exhausted, you know, once I, once I, I don't unwind like that. It's even hard for me to watch a show. I've been trying to watch The, the Walking Dead kind of like, uh, from this past, uh, this past weekend. I haven't even got to it yet. I'll get to it eventually. See, you like being productive. I like to, I like to sit. <laughs> just sit. <laughs> sit. No, sitting's cool. I back sitting. Sit you know? in the crib. Well, no, like, well, when I, when I get home, that is. Yeah. Well, even when I listen to music, I'm doing stuff. Yeah. You know, so like, oh, oh my God. That, that's why that I like bothers music. me. Really? I, I used to like sit and like focus. And now whenever I put on music, I'm like, I gotta, I gotta do something. I can't sit yeah. still. Like, even when I'm watching like TV, I'm just like, I'm like on Twitter or like, yeah. or writing something. Like, I'm just like, ah, uh, yeah. check it. Email. Like, I just, I, I have a problem. I just can't sit still. <laughs> I, have, I have a problem. Yeah. Yeah. I can't stop. Uh, Mark, what are you into this week? Um, oh, yeah, I saw Give for the first time, and I'm like fully into Give now. I was oh, okay. always a mild fan, but now it's cool, awesome. Where'd yeah. you see him? Uh, Middle East. Oh, cool. Cool. Yeah. Big fan. Yeah, it was really good. Right. They're, they're awesome live. Very cool. Cool. Jake, what are you into? I dig music. Nice. Um, I I put on a couple records. I can't remember what I put on. Uh, it was just like the most the, recent stuff. The I, horrendous record. The new horrendous record's great. Yeah. Um, and as I was gloating before, I was an early believer in that band. Yeah, you got you, me into them. Yeah, you've been you've been telling us about horrendous for a while. Yeah, like about a year. Or so I get, I think they had a record come out like a year or a year and a half ago. That yeah, I, really I think it was two thousand thirteen. The other one. Thirteen. Wow. Time flies. I think so. Yeah, with um, the, the orange like fire yeah, dude. It was yeah, like yeah. a blue, yeah, blue, yeah, yeah. That that record was great, and the new horrendous record I really enjoy. If you're into like uh, uh, band, like later era death or something like that, sort of like technical yeah. metal. That's that's still but that's still musical. That's still listenable and not like totally noodle. You know, noodle tech. Mm-hmm. You know, like the the progressive metal world is like unlistenable. I think now it's like this dude sort of like jerking off on a guitar. This is not that. <laughs> yeah. You know, this is like, this is like way more interesting. <laughs> Doesn't and sound like you, Dragon Force. <laughs> no, I mean th- those dudes can all rip. But yeah, I, I just like soulful, emotional music, and it's, in a, in a metal, it's kind of rare. And and, and her- horrendous have that. Um, it's not quite a throwback. It's just like a new sort of chapter of that sort of thing. Um, I'm a metal guy. 
you know, and I'm a, I'm an everything guy, but I I like metal. The new Vol record I put on there, mm-hmm. that's a dude from Yob, Nate uh, from Converge and Doom Riders and stuff turned me on to that record. Brilliant record, totally awesome. It just came out on Profound Lore, the CD version. Uh, what else did I throw in there? Uh, Bell Witch, new Bell Witch record is dark. Yeah, dark. I I like that band a lot. They're super fun. If you like doom and gloom, that's kind of that kind of thing. Um, sounds like it was recorded inside of a tunnel in the middle of the earth. Which is you know, <laughs> I I like I like bands that that go 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 low like that. And uh, the the with the Swami John Reese yes. record, the Surf record. Um, it's Nate also turned me onto that record. Um, when we were at Fun 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 Fest, uh, we listened to that one one morning uh, in in our hotel room. It's fucking awesome, and it's a uh, the new so I mean, John Reese is a guitar player for a variety of bands. Yes. But if you're you know a fan of Hot Snakes or Travel Like Jehu or anything, it's it's him, and he's playing surf rock, but it's more like progressive surf rock, and it's kind of dark and uh, a little emotional, and it's not like a it's not you know totally predictable it's it's really it's really good cool. it's really really good i have to give that a listen yeah give that a listen for sure um and uh that's that's all i got i think for music right now cool. i mean there's a million other things but that's just that some stuff i've been listening to lately cool new magic circle record i like the one song i've heard i'm excited to hear the rest of it too i gotta listen to that too i, I want to say i'm pretty sure it's streaming now is it yeah i'll have to i'll have to check we're, that we're out getting, we're getting lps in soon we have the cds right now cool always pushing the records caleb I'm sorry Jeez. couldn't help <laughs> it god <damn> <laughs> um i'm in uh to the leftover season season two you guys watch any of that cool. yeah it's 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 fucked this season. It seems awesome. I just haven't seen it. Yet. Yeah, I've heard. Yeah. this. I keep hearing this season. You're talking better. about it like every day. So yeah, I, I'm trying to get pe- more people to watch it because I have a feeling that it's going to get canceled. Yeah, I kind of think it will too. <laughs> I, I just I, know, I, I do the same thing with with because like I, I don't know. I feel like not a lot of people. I have no one to talk to about it because yeah. nobody else watches it. And I'm just like, this show's awesome. Why is anyone watching it? And uh, sometimes like sometimes I like shows and they just end up being complete duds and I'm just like well, I don't know if I just have bad taste or I think everybody fell off leftover season one because I heard it was bad no no not at all I mean it's 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 slow yeah yeah it's I mean, uh you know I don't I don't mind slow but sometimes slow pays off yeah but uh no it's great it's great it's great I love it speaking of HBO though do you think that there's gonna be a season three of True Detective after everyone hated oh that it? was yeah. I'm pretty sure they just announced it Wait, yeah, there is? is? I think they already signed on yeah, for I mean, yeah, could I mean, be wrong, but I, I'm pretty yeah. sure. That was a train wreck. Yeah, second season was wrong. I still haven't finished I, the last I watched episode. it. I watched the whole I watched thing. Me too. And I was just like, well, it's over now. To, to me, it felt really like a legit film noir piece. Like, it didn't yeah. It didn't feel like, um, like, it almost felt like an homage to, like, some of the, like, early, like, like, early 90s, like, weird kind of, like, dark movies that start to explore that that world of kind of like um i don't know of contemporary like you know crime dark crime stuff Mm -hmm. i don't know i didn't i didn't hate it but it was like you know wildly predictable and some of the casting was suspect but oh my god some of the acting was just terrible in the show it it was you know i think it was just it was too many stories and too you know too much going there was there was a lot going on there needed to be some some story editing in there i was wondering why uh i know like woody harrelson and uh, mcconaughey and mcconaughey were executive producers on season two and I, yeah. I don't know how much if that was just you know like a contractual thing or if they had yeah. any sort of input but that could have also affected some things it's difficult too coming off. I mean, I think personally, I think the, it was, the se- first season was one of the greatest Perfect. seasons of television. Yeah, it, was it was great ever. It was unpredictable. It had one of the best episodes that I ever in television. Yeah. I think second uh, season just got super rushed after the. It was tough success to, of the first. It was tough to follow up, but man, they're trying to put like these big actors in like these TV shows, and some of them just, just didn't work. It didn't translate. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, it, yeah, it felt it felt weird. It sort of felt like um, I've never watched anything like this, but it's it's what I would generalize as what like NBC does for like a dark, edgy show. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean. Like they're, they're always like you know like three years behind. Like they'll probably have like a zombie show that's called like not yeah. The Walking Dead, but like 
You know. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there's like ten like Game of Thrones ripoffs now. Yeah. yeah. That are just like yeah. this isn't you know, it does doesn't work. Yeah. That's weird. So that's it. That's it for what we're into. Anything else, guys, before we uh, sign off here? Thanks for having me. Oh, yeah, you're thanks welcome. For coming on. No you're problem. welcome. You're, you're well. You're. Uh, I'm usually you're, just on the other side of the door, just listening, or actually just trying to keep the dog. You're lucky we let we let you on the show. <laughs> no problem. Um, <laughs> yeah, we, we normally don't do guests. <laughs> yeah, you don't do guests. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. I listen to the show all the time. I love the fact that you guys are doing this, and it's awesome. And, Thanks. And uh, you know, it's a. Uh, fucking cool i back it thank you i'll come on i'll come on whenever thank you please don't cancel the show yeah i don't think i can <laughs> <laughs> i think trey is the only one that has like the big like delete button like, like if, if this was some kind of monster it'd be del- i would i would delete that i would de- i would hit the delete yeah, yeah. Awesome. Oh, how about you watch some kind of monster? Oh God, <laughs> the greatest, the greatest comedy of all time. I've seen that. It's so yeah. good. I fucking love some kind of monster. Oh my God, it's so funny. It's we like, should have, we should have a therapist come in here. <laughs> we always oh, joke, we, we always joke that we want a ban, we want a band therapist. Oh my God, all the time We're on the road. With we'll us. get one for the podcast. Sometimes the people that we travel with or just our friends are kind of like. They're like comedy therapy, you know. They're just around and yeah. they they work and stuff. But it's more because they're they're funny as shit and fun make you smile more. Mm-hmm. But the the guy with the sweater, the life coach, <laughs> 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 fucking awesome. On that note, that's this is the Death Talk episode thirty one. Um, have a good Thanksgiving. Uh, listen to more Death Talk and uh, Black Friday and Black Friday yeah, sale. Bundle, Black bundle, Friday bundle, sale. Bundle bundle, 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 and uh, go buy the new Converge Blu-ray on Friday. And uh, don't get killed trying to get into Walmart. So don't get trampled. <laughs> don't you know what I mean? Like I don't know. Be just, safe. Just well, yeah. I don't know that new Blu-ray. You know, <laughs> yeah. It's gonna be there, so maybe you should. There, yeah, yeah. Maybe don't get killed, but do some killing. If you don't get it on Black Friday, don't worry. We, we <laughs> do have. Some- we have plenty of copies. Do some uh, crowd, don't, don't crowd kill surfing. Over it. You know. <laughs> All right. Bye.